Welcome to DXB Today, where we're going to take you into a bright future of travel, or as Harry would say, Lumos. Welcome aboard DXB today. This is your fantastic three pilots. Tonight we are exploring the world of travel from the best destinations to tips and tricks for your next holiday. Whether you're a globe chatter, prefer to travel locally, we have something for you as we'll be chatting with multiple experts from the travel industry. And for those of us who keep wishing we could travel for free, Today might just be the day you finally crack that spell because today is also International Harry Potter Day. Are we fans? What's your favourite Hogwarts house? Sure you jest. It is allegiance to House Slytherin and the Dark Lord. Was that an Alan Rickman impression? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> I'm more like uh, Lannisters, Targaryens. I'm like... A Game of Thrones girl. Sorry, guys. Kid. I haven't done I haven't done the Harry Potter thing It's not yet. very kid-friendly. Do your children not I like know. it? I know. I started reading one of the books, and I remember thinking, this is fantastic. And then I don't know what happened. I just, I don't know. I feel like it's too late to catch up on. It's now. never too late, it's too late to catch up Are on. they outdated, no. all the movies? And the, the books are obviously not. The Put the books are. aside. Watch the show. No. <laughs> you can't do that. you got to read the whole thing first. All right. <laughs> we'll debate about that on another episode. But for now, our guest co-host, or should I say co-pilot for today, is an adventure, speaker and traveller. Let's find out who it is. Hello, I'm Ram Harag and I'm today's guest co-host. Can't wait to share this adventure with you. Ra, of course, is the youngest Arab and the first Saudi woman to climb Mount Everest. She'll be in studio in just a few minutes. But before we discuss the real world of travel, let's have a trip down to the wizarding world where Faris may have gotten a little bit excited. Hey, I'm at Mall of the Emirates, and anyone that knows me will tell you that I'm a massive fan of Harry Potter. That's why I'm very excited to be right here checking out the brand new shop at Mall of the Emirates. It's called Harry Potter The Wizarding World Shop by Fandom. It's got everything a Harry Potter fan could want, and I can't wait to check it out. Of course, if you come here, one of the main things you can expect is merchandise. Whether you're a fan of Gryffindor, Slytherin, Hufflepuff, or Ravenclaw, there's merch for everybody. We're talking sweaters, we're talking winter hats, we're talking gloves, notebooks, water bottles, coloring books. There is so much here on offer. So no matter what age you are, no matter what you want, and no matter what your budget is, there is something here for you. And there's some amazing photo opportunities for fans right here in the store. Of course, we have the trolley going right through the wall at platform nine and three quarters. Not only that, we've got a statue of Harry Potter himself that you can pose next to, but this is probably the most popular one, the sorting hat, where not only can you get a picture getting sorted into your house, the hat actually speaks and will sort you into a Hogwarts house. How cool is that? And one of the most exciting attractions in the store, of course, has to be the wand shop. Because after all, the wand chooses the wizard, Mr. Potter. And here fans can pick up wands from their favorite characters. They can pick the one they want. They can look at it beforehand. We have a few right there that you can check out. Each one very different and very detailed in its own way. Expelliarmus. Well, I never got my letter from Hogwarts, but thanks to Harry Potter, the Wizarding World store by fandom, I've relived my childhood memory. So make sure you come on down and pick up some cool stuff like this. I had such a magical time at the Harry Potter shop. I was like I was a kid again. I haven't You're still yet. a kid. <laughs> oh my gosh, we have to say hi. Raha Muharak is in the house. Hello, An hello. actual real-life adventurer, which I think was a, my dream job as a child. <laughs> I didn't know you could actually do it. Never too late. Tell us about some of the adventures that you've been on. So basically, like you, I grew up being one of those adventure children dreaming of, you know, seeing the world and going on adventures. I never imagined that my love of sports and my quest to climb the seven summits would lead me to become 
becoming a person that I, I've always wanted to be, which is an adventure traveler specialist. Um, every, every season I pick a location, after I finish the seven summits, of course, I run out of <laughs> continents to go to. Um, I pick a location to highlight, to showcase its culture, its beauty, the people, and also to leave it better than what I found it as much as I can. So every time you visit a country, you do something there, you contribute, you give back. I try as much as I can because I believe in doing small things with big love. Sometimes it's really cool, big gestures, like for example, in the clip you see, we found a lot of issues with street kids, so we decided to help build for them a little house for them to sleep at night. And some places is just highlighting, uh, for example, in, in the Maldives, they have lots of really cute locations where they save turtles who are hurt. That's just really simple to highlight. So I always urge people to travel responsibly and travel with, with a big heart because you never know what difference you make. Let, let's talk achievements here. You're the first <laughs> Saudi woman keep forgetting that part. <laughs> to ever climb the seven summits. Now, while norm, a normal human instinct would say stay away from high places, uh, what drives you to such heights? Why not? Um, the cheeky answer is why not? So when I first started mountaineering, climbing before I became a mountaineer, the reaction was quite negative. I'm so proud to say that's not the case. I think I'm the only athlete that celebrates every time my record's broken, every time an Arab woman in general or specifically a Saudi woman goes up. I'm like, yes. Um, but at the time, it was considered to be a bit of a taboo and I thought I was, it's a bit ridiculous that we can't be whatever we dreamt of being and what's wrong with being a mountaineer. So the drive was a little bit uh, <laughs> chicken, a little bit naughty, but I just wanted to break the stereotype and lead by example. And also it feels pretty good to prove people wrong from the top of the world and break the stereotype that loudly. But people really celebrate you for that because I see you doing a lot of campaigns where you're the first woman to have do done this. And you, you always talk about, you always highlight that there's not enough women out there taking risks and that it's a very, specifically in this, a very male dominated. Yeah. So what are you doing right now to encourage other women? So I, I decided, so I can't believe this, I'm gonna give my, my age away, but it's this year is my 10 year anniversary of my Everest climb. So I can't believe it's been 10 years. And I promised myself back then, just like how I had lots of amazing people who helped me, I will pay it forward and I'll pass the torch. So I decided to do a competition where I opened it up to anyone who wants to compete and we will take two winners back with me to base camp to celebrate my 10 year anniversary and also to open the door up for the next generation. So two lovely women won and we're leaving in a couple of days, like next week. Wow. <laughs> and, um, I want to go back to celebrate the mountain, to highlight women, uh, how far women have come in sports in general, but specifically in the region, even more specifically for Saudi. It's just an incredible um, way to, to show how far we've come past mountains, past barriers, past all these things. I'm so proud to say that I'm not the only one anymore. I know it's <laughs> weird. I know most athletes don't, they want to keep the records, but um, yeah. I hey, just, you were the first one there. You still, I, you still I have mean, that. Still that. You're the first. No one can take that but away. But who's counting? I mean, the, the most important thing is that I would not be the last. Yeah. That's the most important thing. Well, yeah. maybe you could share something with us. Now, <laughs> since we're exploring, of course, the world of travel, uh, all of those jets are flying to Jeddah. You. I know, right? Uh, Al Ula, could you share some of your favorite destinations, experiences? Okay, since I'm a travel specialist, I have to be unbiased and share everything because I'm from Jeddah. So if you ask me, I'll say Jeddah because of the ocean. But the truth is, Saudi has always had incredible, beautiful locations. Um, the, the only difference is the last couple of years, there's a lot of infrastructure that has been set up, a lot of flights that have been added. You can now fly directly to, to, to Al Ula in season. Um, I can't pick a specific one, but I would have to say, you have to go see Al Ula. You have to see the, the history of Riyadh. Uh, you have to uh, meet the amazing people and hospita hospitality of a lot of the locations that are not in the big cities. You have to eat fish in, the, in Jeddah. And if you can, pass by, say hi to my mom, because she would love to have you. She loves having guests. <laughs> you can have thousands of people over at your mom's house. I know, my mom is <laughs> like, I want more people to come. But um, I, I, I like that we can show the beauty of the country, its people, the amazing hospitality. And just what we have to offer for years, every time I used to travel, I used to talk about Saudi Arabia, and not a lot of people were aware of it. Now we have the awareness and we have the infrastructure, so I really can't wait to, to literally have my mom. <laughs> I'm like, mom, I think you should make your house as an Airbnb. She's just really, she loves having people over all the time. And um, we have an amazing uh, hospitality in our culture, so. Maybe fish at auntie's place? <laughs> <laughs> Raha, you've 
made traveling second nature to yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, if somebody were to come to you and say, I've always wanted to go on adventures, not Good like question. going to the usual, the Paris, the London, the usual tourist spots, I want to go do something different, that they're a little bit scared, they don't know what to expect, what advice would you give them? So there's two types of adventures, and I'm going to be very honest. The first type is the more complicated, takes time to plan. The second type is the one that's in your backyard. Every city, every country has gems, has locations that you can find. It doesn't have to be an expensive trip that's across the world for you to go, to, to go on adventure. That's, that's one. Mm. But if you really, really want to go on adventure, especially now after COVID, I advise you to plan, save, budget, and book it like anything, like a checkup, like, seeing, like anything in life, book the time. Make sure that you plan the time in the year. Because if you don't, the tickets will be very expensive by the time you get there. A lot of things will be uh, uh, double, triple the price. So like everything, plan. I know it's very simple to say and it's like... No, but like, we don't commit. We don't I mean, commit. To, but if you put, if you pay and you put money in this non-refundable, well, you, you will commit. <laughs> yeah. So my advice, I know it's simple and I know it might be a bit of a cliche. Plan it. And it doesn't have to be one of those very expensive trips. Plan three or four or five days once or twice a year, depending on your budget, but put it in your calendar and put money on it because once you pay, you <laughs> must go. <laughs> I mean, it's very good advice. Uh, I should say I did go to uh, Vietnam, to Ha Giang, and I had no plan whatsoever. I want to go there. <laughs> and it was great. But more on travel after the break. So keep your seatbelt fastened and don't go anywhere. Hey, 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 welcome back. Now our get next guest on the show knows all about the power of travel and how it changes lives. Please help us welcome to the show Senior Director at El Mosefer Concierge. As a concierge, Rob Arrow. How's it going? How was that intro for you? That was wonderful. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Rob, we are all planning our summers right now. So, you know, you being here on the show is perfect timing. And for very selfish reasons, I need all your tips. <laughs> Hit us up. What are some of the biggest mistakes? I want to start off with the mistakes because I feel like people are making a whole lot of them. What are some of the biggest mistakes that people are making when they are booking trips? And how are you guys there to help? I think the biggest mistake that people make is they plan to do too much mm. in too short a time. You need to really immerse yourself in the destination, really enjoy the destination. Everyone goes and they're like, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this. And then they get there and within day three or day four, they're completely tired and it, and it then doesn't become a joyous occasion and an experience. So I always say to people, and that's where the likes of myself and other industry experts come in and we can say, okay, look, this is your first experience. What do you really want to enjoy that first time you go there? Enjoy that and you never know, there could be another opportunity to go back. Or when you're there, you'll meet people, you'll meet locals who will tell you, hey, go here, do this as well. And I think this is the problem. People just do too much in too short a time. You would hate us. <laughs> and my husband and I, every time we go anywhere, on a schedule 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. nonstop. Ouch. Yeah, Ouch. it's a workout. I mean, that's not really my speed. I like to know the country I'm going to and just sort of figure it out as I go along. That way you can be flexible, dynamic. Which leads me to ask, are you seeing a trend with more people solo traveling? Because I've only started doing that after COVID. Are you seeing a trend of that type of traveling? Absolutely. Um, we're st we've started to see a large increase in solo travelers. And I think that the world's better connected. So even if you're traveling on your own, you're connected to your base, you're connected to your friends and your family. Um, but also you can connect with people when you're there or connect with experiences when you're there. So it's no longer this having to plan everything in advance, being a little bit maybe unsure or unsafe and having to go with friends, etc. And And it's a great way to meet people as well. Like I, I do travel a lot myself. I just love it. And Sometimes it gives you that flexibility to do what you want, when you want, without your friends or your family telling you 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. We need to get PM. food, we need to stop for the toilet, <laughs> yeah. oh, I don't wake up that early, oh, I don't really want to rock climb, I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As a traveler, sometimes I feel I, I, I get confused where to go and I can't find uh, you know, new ideas. Can you advise someone like me who's looking for a new destination? What would you advise as like the top new locations? I think a bunch. I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> and it's tough with you because you've been to a lot of places. Um, I think the thing is, is that like obviously as the world opens, ex ex 
well, after COVID especially, we've, we've had time to think, we've had time to look. I think from this region especially, people around here, the areas that they're still looking at is the Americas, especially South America, Latin America. We're seeing more interest in these destinations. Obviously, connectivity from Dubai, Doha, etc. Uh, now we can fly directly to Mexico City. Uh, okay, it's a short stop in Barcelona, or you can just carry on on the plane and, and go on. So you can get to Mexico City. Then that opens up a huge, huge areas to travel from culture to the Caribbean, to the Pacific, etc. Uh, from there. So... I think that as the world opens, it, it's, it's giving somebody the confidence. Mm. And I think, as you were saying about putting down the money, <laughs> giving them the confidence, and then going to new places and exploring. And I think that, that that's really what you have to do. But I really feel that one of those areas from this region especially is the South and Central America regions where people still haven't quite got there yet because it is a long way to go. Yeah, you're right. But you once that, you're there... That's my list. I'm uh, so happy you said that. <laughs> yeah. Rob, I gotta say, my greatest fear travel-wise, whether it was solo travel or family travel, is expectation versus reality. Have you ever seen those videos on TikTok? <laughs> There's a crystal clear lake and beautiful green. Next thing you know, in reality, the lake is actually green. So how, when someone wants to travel, how do you make sure you meet a traveler's expectation in reality? I think without being biased towards agents and experts in the industry, it is really about talking to someone who has that expertise. I love to travel, so it gives me the opportunity to go to a destination, see somewhere. I was very lucky. I've just come back from Cambodia and Laos last week, which was amazing. Oh. Um, but when I was there, I had my own experience. I went to Angkor Wat one morning. Everyone wants to go to Angkor Wat to watch the sunrise. However, we have a really great ground handler that's there, someone who looks after the client when they're actually there, and they kind of act on your behalf uh, when, the, when your travelers are traveling. Um, and this guy who had been there for 20 years, he knew this exact spot you could go to where you can see the whole of the temples at sunrise, but also get the peace and tranquility of being there. So he took me there. I was there in front of the lake, the reflection. It was absolutely beautiful. But then he took me around the corner and then the reality is, around the corner where everyone else gets taken yeah. and dropped off, there are literally three, four hundred people <laughs> stood there trying to find the right spot, doing their selfies, doing it, like the noise. It was, and I was like, wow. Scene killer. Literally within this small moment, I've gone from someone who's given me that opportunity to find somewhere really specific. Mm. And then that's the reality. And that's what it's about. It's about finding the right agencies and the right people and the experts who have been somewhere and not necessarily been somewhere but just have the people on the ground that can support and help and that means so much to someone like me by the way who's <laughs> traveling with two young boys i'm always so scared to be adventurous because like what if something goes wrong and i don't know a local so i, I love yeah, that tip that's what it's about rob arrow you take a great share of the meaning of your name and like an arrow <laughs> you gave us a bullseye as answers to those questions thank you very oh, much thank, so you. thank you all right when it comes to travel trends and insights arabian travel market is the leading tourism event in the region running right now till the 4th of may and it's the 30th year khaled went down to find out more I'm here at the Arabian Travel Market where over 34,000 people will be attending over the next few days to see what's new in the industry. What can we expect this year from the ATM? Oh, thank you, Khaled. I mean, it's amazing. You can only hear the bars in the background as we've uh, descended down at Dubai, Dubai World Trade Center. This year is our 30th year in operation, which is fantastic, a huge milestone for us. And as the leading global uh, uh, event for the inbound and outbound travel industry in the Middle East, we're expecting and you'll see a, a huge array of exhibitors, destinations and travel professionals coming down to connect, reconnect and clearly uh, make those all important business connections across the next four days. And uh, I was reading up, there's a lot of things, especially this year, that we're going to be tackling, especially with sustainability. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? The venue is uh, no single use plastic at all. Um, there's lots of initiatives with uh, recyclable, reuse, and of course, sustainable materials across the lanyards, badges, etc. What can you tell us more about the region? Uh, thank you very much for the invitation and being part of your uh, show. Um, and uh, I uh, really 
I'm really happy that uh, we can promote um, our region. Uh, our region is part of the Central Europe, uh, part of the Slovakia as a Central Europe country. And uh, very famous about our region is uh, tradition in uh, healthcare and uh, especially spas. I heard there was something special, especially what you did recently, connecting the Gulf with your region. Yeah, we established in January uh, the Bureau and it's, it's like an institutional roof, yes. how to cooperate. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned, the general aim is to establish direct flight from Dubai to uh, Piestani. What can you tell us more when it comes for travelers, especially coming out of the region? Yeah, for sure. Um, Barbados has a lot to offer. And, and I say that because, not because it's true, I say that because of the wonderful feedback we get from customers who visit Barbados. Um, we have snorkeling, we have all the water-based activities you can ever want. We have a number of land-based um, tourist attractions that complements the visitor experience. We have a wonderful core of people on the island who are very hospitable and who lend to the vacation experience. And the one thing about Barbados is that regardless of who you are, you're allowed to vacation with privacy. You don't have any harassment chasing you, you don't care who you are. Well, I am very excited because you make me want to go back to Barbados. But it's a pleasure having you here with us. I hope you enjoyed the rest of the ATM and uh, thank you. The Arabian travel market is something definitely to be on your bucket list. If you're planning your next trip or adventure, you need to come on down here and see what there is to offer. So this is the 30th edition of ATM, which is the Arab tourism or ter Arab travel market. And its return in this 30th edition is a testament to the resilience of the travel market, of course, especially after the recovery from COVID. Now, travel agency are, all traveling agencies are offering uh, very all new protocols that offer safety to travelers, which is the priority that travelers look forward to in any destination they go to. What do you think, Rock? Oh, I love it. I was there yesterday and it's for someone like me and many adventures, it's it's like a gold mine. Uh, I, I, I go there, my advice is always wear comfortable shoes, look very presentable, have loads of business cards and mini packages of your of your press kit or your media kit, um, just so that people can mem rem remember who you are with your business card. Mm. Because after the end of the day, you'll get confused. And is you your remember face, the face on your business card? Mm. No, so <laughs> no, it's like a, I, I, I'm, I, I used that. to be a creative director. So I, it's like a little envelope that has a little profile and my business card inside, and I would give it to people. Mm. And through, out of the, the, the ATM, I got trips to Iceland, I got trips to, to Mongolia, I got some amazing trips. Okay, you go and you, you meet 100 people, you get maybe two or three trips, but in the end of the day, you build a network, especially for people like me that I don't come from a really, really big, uh, uh, I don't have a big team. You know, team of one. It's amazing to go and build your name. So now when I walk around an ATM, people come and say, hi, why don't you come see this year? So go, have an open heart, be ready for people to, to interact with you and have something to leave for them to remember you by. I mean, also, when, yeah. when you're into travel, it's so enjoyable talking to other people I who are know, into travel right? and you get to share those experiences with each other. Yeah. Indeed. Well, guess what, folks? It is time for the Daily Roundup, where we discuss the hottest topics. So, Dina, what do you have for us today? Well, it's all good news, and I'm going to get Raha to help me out today. <laughs> but first of all, okay, my favorite trip ever was to Japan. We went to 10, sorry, 10 cities in eight days. It was <gasps> incredible. And you can now, UAE residents can now apply for e-visas online. And every, so this, this is the good news. Everything's just becoming online. And what did you mention, Raha, during Montenegro, the break? You're, you're quite uh, a pro has, here. Yeah, Montenegro has opened up since last year, I believe. Uh, I sure. would love to. The one thing I'd <laughs> like to see in Japan are the sure, real-size actual uh, uh, moving statues for Gundam. <gasps> <laughs> so wait, let, me, <laughs> let me clarify all this for everyone watching. UAE residents wishing to travel to 27 Schengen countries uh, may soon be able to apply for their visa online and plans to digitalize the process are underway. Now, also speaking of top destinations, Switzerland, top summer destinations, wish list for UAE travelers. It also includes, um, I think we said Maldives, Turkey, and of course, Japan, which is always a huge hit uh, amongst residents here. Have you been to the, Have you been to all of those countries, Raha? So I haven't been to Japan. <laughs> Japan is my dream location. It is it's incredible. my number one location. I'm, I, 
I've always wanted to go to see the cherry blossoms, but also it's the only mountain I didn't climb, which is Fuji. <laughs> and it's the only mountain that my father wanted to climb with me. Oh. So out of all of the mountains, it's just that. So hopefully I can put it out there in the world and I'll be able to be invited to go to Japan. Let's all go. I'll Why sign not? <laughs> D don't say it if you don't mean it, because I'll be like, ah, I want to go. But uh, but yes, this news is amazing for me when I when I heard the news as well. I want tips from you, by the way. Sure. Oh, I can absolutely plan out your itinerary. <laughs> but I will go against the advice that was given, which I will give you a thousand different things to see <laughs> and do. <laughs> you won't have time to breathe. But we're hoping to go to South Korea this summer. Oh, wow. We are, yeah, and an adults-only trip, which I'm very excited <gasps> about. We're looking at potentially a Disney cruise, which has been a fantasy. Adult-only trip mind. as well? No, no. <laughs> There's a water park on the cruise, guys. I'm losing my mind. Kind of want to ditch the kids and enjoy myself. But no, they, they, they would be coming if we go. Um, what else? What else? We're hoping to go back to Montreal. What are you guys doing? I'm going to Istanbul uh, this weekend. Wow. Only for a couple of days. Then I'll be back. And then I've got big plans for Thailand, Indonesia. And I really want to see Laos as well at some point. <laughs> I can't help but feel jealous. We're all in the well, same industry here. Am I the only one who doesn't know where is that shop that sells time? You take all the jobs, so we've got time. <laughs> you know what? No, no, no. I really did take Raha's um, uh, uh, tip today, th this year, which is it's been a number of years. My kids have been too young. I've been too worried to travel. There was COVID. And this year I was like, I am doing it. You know, my kids soon enough aren't going to want to travel with me. They're going to go off to university. Blah, blah, blah. So that, like, this is the time to do it. I want to visit as many countries as I can in the next few and, and go on all those, you know, take off all the, that wish list. How many have you been to? How many countries have I been to? Um, I think I it was 36. Go through all of them. 36. No, I'm joking. I don't know. I haven't had a lot of opportunities to travel. I'm trying it now, but I think about you 13. You haven't counted? Okay. 13. Oh, and, no. yeah, sorry. No. no how many? No. Oh, how many destinations that yes. I've been to? Does home and work count? <laughs> <laughs> Goodness. I want to see if I win this one. I think I've been to 80 this year. Oh. This year? No, no I mean, up to now. I've, uh, well, well, see, I've reached 80 this year, which I'm very proud of. Can I show that off a little bit? I'm very oh, proud, proud of it. Unbelievable. A <laughs> little bit jealous. My goal is to, be, to, see, to, to go to as many, visit as many countries as my age. So. I'm a little behind. Uh, okay, it's time for a quick break, but our next guest is going to talk about safaris, lodges, and adventures in wild Africa. Stay with us. Welcome back to the show. Today, we are joined by the founder of a UAE-based publication curated to invoke curiosity on travel, culture, and lifestyle across Africa. Yvonne from Travel Essence Magazine, welcome to the show, and thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so thrilled to be here with you guys. This so let's get some background. Tell us a little bit about what you do and what you're trying to achieve as well. Wow, okay, so maybe let me circle back to how Travel Essence Magazine came about. COVID hit us, nobody was ready. We were not expecting it, everything shut down. But I qu quickly realized that the only movement channel that wasn't quite as locked in was the Africa route. And because, you know, working in, in media and in PR, there's always questions that rise. Oh, you're from, where are you from? You're African, where are you from? I'm from Zimbabwe, where is that? So it just, I felt like it was time. I've always wanted to have a travel magazine of sorts or some kind of media platform. And that's how Travel Essence Magazine was born. Amazing. Yeah. Well, but, I always feel like we don't know where to start when it's Africa. There's so many countries I haven't yeah. been to personally, and I never, you know, if I'm if I'm uh, you know, it's content, I want to start exploring. Yes. Where would you say we start? Gosh, and that's the thing, right? Africa is 54 whole countries, and where do you start? There's you know North Africa and there's Sub-Saharan Africa. What kind of experience are you looking for? So if it's adventure, there's a couple of destinations you can look look at. If it's you know um, safaris, obviously you can transcend or traverse a whole cross-section of Africa but to answer your question and as far as where um, I will speak to the heavy hitters that I think are easy to get to from Dubai obviously Kenya is one East Africa you're looking at your Kenya you're looking at your Tanzania uh, Southern Africa you're looking at your South Africa your Zimbabwe there's Emirates flights you've got your KQs Ethiopian Airways there's so many ways that you can get to different destinations on direct flights out of DXP which is really cool. And you do have those big hitters that everyone sort of knows and goes to and famous for yeah. certain things but it was actually during Expo that I learned about some countries in Africa that I wouldn't have thought to go to like Eswatini, Gabon. Right. Are there any other suggestions that people m might not be on the top of someone's bucket list but are definitely worth checking out? I would say Mozambique's beaches are untainted. They 
are stunning, absolutely breathtaking. It's a direct flight from Dubai into Joburg, connect within an hour and you can be there. Rwanda is another amazing destination, really pristine, really, really clean and organized. It's gorgeous. And you can, of course, go gorilla trekking, which is a must try. Oh, for the trekking. Yeah, you must. It's an absolute, <laughs> it's, an, it's an absolute must. Um, Namibia, you've got a cross section of um, landscape. So you've got the ocean, but you also have the desert, but you also have the savanna. And of course, I'm biased because I, I am Zimbabwean. You have to go to Zimbabwe. Victoria Falls, one of the seven wonders of the world. Look, there's so I, many places to start. I can absolutely vouch for that. I, it's one of my favorite uh, continents and lo locations to go to, not just because of the beauty, the diversity, and how every single country has its own you know, feel and vibe, and they're very close to each other, so you yeah. can do multiple at the same time. So that's one of the things that a lot of people don't realize, is that you can truly, really travel, go, go around. And, and like what you mentioned, during COVID, I actually got more, more excited about Africa because it was one of the most easiest places yeah. to go to. And the people were just so nice and welcoming. Um, to Absolutely, I can. I, my top is Zambia, yes. Zimbabwe, uh, Botswana, um, Rwanda, Uganda, and then Kenya. Tanzania. Actually, Kolo. I can't. <laughs> I just I can't do the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the best thing is, is that every single time you go, you're just immersed in such a new, different Absolutely. feel and vibe, and the kindness of the people is just Absolutely. unbelievable. And it's a good point that you that you raise about being able to go to multiple destinations within a couple of days, because you know, with, with Zimbabwe and Zambia and Botswana, for example, you can quite literally drive across them within two okay. days. So if you plan your trip properly or accordingly, you can peg for eight days and do two in Botswana, which is a completely different experience, cross over into Zimbabwe, completely different experience, and then cross over into Zambia. So there's so many ways to get it done and you know, you just need to but learn just yourself just one to... word of advice real quick. If you cross borders, make sure that you have the right documents because sometimes the visa yes. is not enough for you to cross a border that is in the airport. Mm. I learned the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's very nice. But, you know, sitting in the border was for half a day was not easy. Not, so not make idea, sure you yeah. have the right papers. Absolutely. <laughs> in my humble attempt to dive deeper, because everyone has actually uh, stolen every question that I <laughs> felt like asking. I have nothing left. Just scrapping, you know, what's inside the plate. But every time I heard, I'm, I miss when word of mouth marketing was the ideal yeah. marketing tool. Yeah. Every time I hear my friends saying they're going to Africa, cool. What you doing there? I'm gonna go see the wildlife. Right. Uh, that's the thought in my head that there is only wildlife in Africa. So how can someone further educate themselves and properly perhaps plan a very nice trip or perhaps an adventure to Africa? I think the first question we must ask ourselves is what is the purpose of the travel? So if it's family travel, there's certain destinations that will not work because you know, if you're if you have a baby, you're not going to take a baby on safari because then it's it's wild and it, it, some tents and some some tented camps and some lodges have a, ca a cap to the age groups that can be on site, right? Um, if you're looking to do something more on the wellness side of things, you know, there are certain destinations that are better primed for wellness. Your coastal areas is a really a, a large cross section of, of boutique hotels and properties that are out there that cater to your to to the wellness traveler. So I think. You should ask yourself the question, what is it that I'm trying to achieve from my trip? If it's adventure and safari, great. But some destinations don't have a great safari opportunity. There are some that are better than others. Or it is a limitation to what you can do when you say safari, right? So I think it, let's, let's should start at what exactly are you hoping to achieve from your trip? Mm -hmm. Ivan, I'm so excited to travel. That's all I want to do. I want to go to Africa. You've made me want to do <laughs> Let's it. Let's go. If we want to check out more about Travel Essence, is there a website, an Instagram handle that we can uh, check out? Yes, absolutely. TravelEssenceMag.com is our website. Um, exciting updates on there. Obviously, you can get in touch with me as well on quintessentially underscore Yvonne on Instagram. You can follow our journeys. And we do do some curated travel experiences for small groups. So we try to kind of, they get to cruise along with me and my friends and we, we make it. Fun. I'm saying it. I'm Let's go. It. Let's all go. I would do, I would do a, a, a group trip. Like, Let's I mean, it. all of us. We'll plan it after the show. <laughs> can today. I suggest <laughs> location? Because we were talking about it. Can I suggest Namibia? Yeah. Because uh, it's one of the most, you know. Really pristine. Yeah. Really pristine. <laughs> but there's oh, yeah. just so many we options. We have so many options. We have so many options. But, but I'll, I'll still been be biased. To... I'll still be biased <laughs> I know, towards. But I've been already to, <laughs> to Zimbabwe. So you Zimbabwe. Yeah. We can make it happen. We'll discuss. Thank you so much. And for the work you're doing. And, uh, 
thanks for taking our calls, which are going to be coming to you later uh, on. An <laughs> absolute pleasure. I look forward to having you guys roll along with me. Let's go. But for right now, Raha, you're in the hot seat. Oh, God, I'm nervous about this. Okay. Paying attention. <laughs> Because it's time for the DXB Today quiz. Okay. 60 seconds on the clock. You need to answer as many questions as possible. Are you quizzes. ready? No, let's go. <laughs> I'm really bad with quizzes. We're going to be starting the clock in three, two, one. In which European country is the real life Hogwarts Castle located? Is it Scotland or England? Scotland, my Is the right yeah. answer. Yeah. <laughs> what is the capital city of Thailand? Is it Bangkok or Hanoi? Hanoi. Is the wrong answer. Oh. What is the name of the train that takes Hogwarts students to school every year? The Hogwarts Express or the night bus? Hogwarts Express. Is the right answer. <laughs> Which country is home to the ancient ruins of Machu Picchu? Peru. Is it Peru is the right answer. Which popular theme park in Orlando, Florida is home to the wizarding world of Harry Potter? Is Universal. It a is the right answer. What is the highest mountain in Africa? Is it Kilimanjaro oh. or Mount Kenya? Come on. Kili. <laughs> Kilimanjaro. My love. I twice, climbed it twice. It's correct. Which European city is famous for its canals and gondolas? Is it Amsterdam or Venice? Venice. Is the right answer. What is the name of the mountain range that runs through Dubai's neighboring country, Oman? Is it the Hajar Mountains or the Rocky Mountains? Rocky. Is not the right answer. It's the Hajar Mountains. Hajar is Rocky, no? What is the name of the largest <laughs> desert in the world? Is it A, the Sahara or B, the Gobi? Gobi. Is not the right answer. Sahara is. What is the name of the oh, famous waterfall on the border of Brazil and Argentina? Is it A, Iguaza Falls or B, Victoria Iguaza. Falls? Is the right answer. And that is the end I of the quiz. I can't believe I missed those two. Those that were easy. easy. That's easy. good. So I have, have the point. same reaction to Rocky and the translation. Rocky, it doesn't, no, you should give me half a point. Uh, we can discuss it with the producers. It was just translation. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, seven points, not bad at all. And very, very respectable. Seven and a half for the points, there we apparently. Go. Okay. You're at number top for the week. I'm sad about the, the, You're the starting capital. Strong. You're starting strong, though. You got it. Yeah, I'm sure you can keep your uh, record to the end of the week. <laughs> right over Ali Al Sayyid. He's punching there right now, I'm sure. <laughs> well, Raha, you must be a hammer because you nailed it. That is one. <laughs> and two, to Yvonne. And to Raha, thank you both very much. You've been the lights to the show. <laughs> we appreciate you. Thank you so much for having very me. Well. My pleasure. You're Thanks for having me. Good. Yeah. Don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen, because after the break, we'll be chilling with some tunes right here in the studio. So don't you dare go anywhere. Welcome back to DXB Today, where it's our pride and joy to showcase some of the best artists in the UAE. And today is no different because we're here with Vish. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Part. So tell us a little bit about your music. What type of genre can we expect from you today? Uh, today's song is going to be more like an alt-rock kind of thing, but it's on the softer side, I would say. Okay. And yeah. tell us a little bit about the fashion. <laughs> is, is as much thought going into it? Uh, to be honest, like I kind of like to have like a free kind of flowing kind of a thing because it kind of relates with my music as well. So with the fashion, as long as I'm more comfortable and I can have like a flowy kind of a thing in that, it's perfect for me. No, we can't <laughs> wait to see you flow. So you do music here in the UAE. Yeah, I do. Have you always done it in the UAE or have you uh, been? It's been seven years for me in the UAE. Before that, I was in the UK for three years. So I did there some, some of the music thing. And then before that, I was in India. I think about four or five years in India as well. Amazing. Yeah. So you've been in the industry for a while. For a while. And but professionally, I would say it's just been two years. Okay, yeah. fair enough. But being in the industry yeah. for such a long time in three different countries, what would you say is unique about the United Arab Emirates when it comes to local artists? I think the exposure that these people get in the UAE, the artists, it's massive. When it comes to India, there's so many people and so many artists. There's a lot of competition going on. So not many artists can come up as much as they can in the UAE because if you keep on trying, it's, it's really, I mean, like, to be honest, like, if you have, like, a good taste in music, if you're doing the right things, the exposure is absolutely insane. And do you think there's support as well? Because we absolutely, spoke to yes. some people uh, on uh, the show. I think the industry experts over here, to be honest, they have been so supportive of the new artists. Since I've been here for the last seven years, I've met so many people, and they're always, always, like, just taking artists with open arms. So I think if you go to the right people, perform at the right places, if they like your stuff, I think it's it's one of the best places to be. One of the most important things when it comes to a musician now is the Instagram page. Where can people follow you, listen to your music, My find out more Instagram about Vish? My Instagram handle is Voices of Vish. That's easy to find. Just that's about it. Is there a reason you chose Voices of Vish? Do you do different types of music I, with your voice? Yes, I do. I think it's because I'm multilingual as well. So I do three languages. I do Hindi, English, and Japanese. So that's why I thought it would be much 
to be kind of a diverse kind of a name, so it says Voices of Wish. And what sort of languages can we expect on today's show? Uh, today's is going to be English for sure. <laughs> All right, Vish, we can't wait to hear it. Thank you so much for being here. We're going to let you, you so get much. set up. But in the meantime, I'm going to throw over to Dina with some exciting news. Thanks, Fadas. Well, that's it from us on DXB Today, but we would love to hear from you guys always. So tag us using the hashtag DXB Today on any social media platform with your opinions, your suggestions, or you know what? How about you share your travel plans with us? We would love to hear from you. That's true. And also this week, we're giving away not one, but two major prizes. The first is a pair of Golden Circle tickets to the sold-out Backstreet Boys concert this weekend. To win, you know the drill. Go to the Dubai One TV Insta page and tell us why you should win. Not only that, we're also giving away four gold tickets to Disney Princess, the concert celebrating 100 years of Disney wonder with the Ferdos Orchestra taking place at the Coca-Cola Arena from the 5th to the 7th of May. So again, head down to our Instagram page and make sure you comment on the Disney-themed competition post. What have we learned from today's show, do we think? That we need to travel more and that Yusuf most certainly needs to travel more. What's up? We're young. What are you waiting for? Uh... I wish I was a cat. I only got this one line. Oh, exactly. <laughs> Which that means you should travel to as many places as possible. Which you means I'm scared of heights. <laughs> oh, you don't want to get on a plane? I mean, I once went on a plane. I went to the Philippines. It was a coverage. And my boss tells me, it's all right. It's like going to Bahrain. 45 minutes. And then I sleep. I wake up. There's only rocks below me. Excuse me, flight attendant. How long left? 13 hours, sir. Oh, come on. Did you not look at your plane ticket? No. I, who, who does that? That's not your boss's fault. That's yours. That's like looking down. I thought I'd play a psychological trick on myself. <laughs> well, with that said, thank you very much for joining us tonight. And we'll be seeing you tomorrow. Mas salama. But for now, over to you, Vish. When I see you again I will hold you tight But will it be the same? Will it be the same? When I see you again I'll look into Tell me that you hear the sound of my breaking heart. How can I be at peace when we are oceans apart?